Hi everyone, this is Ida of Created to Create. Welcome back to my channel. If you are not 18 years or older, this video content is not intended for you. I wanted to share, I don't have a sample of my ornaments that I've been making. I've been making gingerbread, uh, polymer clay ornaments, and I don't have a sample because it was a custom order and the from my bro one of my brothers and he already picked it up. But it, they're so easy to make that I wanted to share them with you. Um, so let's get started. And as I go, I'm going to be telling you exactly what I use. There's two, two different clays that I use. One of them is this, um, like a chocolate colored, and this is a Sculpey 3. And the other one is a terracotta color. And I don't have it here with me because I used almost the whole thing. But what I did was I mixed them up together, made sure there was no marbleizing going on. It, it didn't look like marble. I made sure it was all mixed very well together. And uh, I actually ordered another one because I want to make some more ornaments. But th th that's the color that I used. And I will list what I used in the description box. And... Um, as I go along, I'll share the tools and stuff that I bought for you, but you can actually do it pretty economically. If you're only making, let's say you only want to make two ornaments, all you need really is uh, one of the chocolate and a small one of the terracotta. I bought the big one because I was making 10 ornaments, so I needed a big one and the, one of the small ones, but... Here's what it looks like when it's already mixed up, and I just wrapped it in saran wrap, and you do have to bake this. So let me move this. You do have to bake this. So all I use to work on is a piece of um, like wax paper or parchment paper. And uh, because of the color, it does tend to get on your hands and it will get on your work surface. There is a plate for it that I don't have, which is on my wish list because I do enjoy, I have uh, enjoyed playing with polymer clay. And um, so that helps where, you know, I don't have to use these little scraps and they slide around and stuff. But for now, we're going to use this. So we're going to, what I did was I cut the big block. It was a pretty big block into however many ornaments I needed. And then I cut the small block into however many sections that I did my big block. And I mixed a piece of this one with the piece of the terracotta one. So that's how I did that. And if you notice, it's very well mixed in. You don't see any of the dark brown, even though it does have it. The terracotta to me was just a little too orange by itself. So that's why I added the brown. And this is probably enough for one ornament. So let's let's go ahead and start. I don't want my video to get too long. You have to condition this. And there is a little tool for it. I'll list it in the description box, but I don't own it. I just mixed it up with my hands. And this clay is actually pretty soft, so I'm just going to make a little ball out of it in, you know, rubbing it uh, with my hands, just kind of rolling it around in my hands to make a ball. And depending on what size you're going to make, um, mine looks, you know, it's, it's not very big. It's maybe about an inch and a half size ball. And what I'm going to do is after I have it nice and rounded, I'm just going to flatten it out some. Just flatten it. And I try to make them like a quarter of an inch thick, maybe a little bit more because you do have to bake it. And the, the baking directions are on the package, but I'll tell you right now what I do. This seems to be a little bit thicker than an inch and a quarter, so I would probably bake it for about 18 to 20 minutes. So there's the head, and I'm not going to do much to that. But what I you are going to need is a paper clip. And the reason I use a paper clip is because I want to make sure that my ornaments don't fall apart. So I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to cut a piece off. I actually have all my tools here. I had them all on my kitchen table. So I am going to cut off a piece. This is going to be my hook. So you get left with a piece like this. The, the piece that you extend out, that's the one you want to use for your ornament because you want to make sure that the hook part goes not just through the head but to the body so it won't you know it's less likely to break or anything so this is what I do I don't have to add any glue I don't have to add anything after I flatten the circle out I'm just gonna insert this you see I hope you can see what I'm doing I'm just going straight down all the way through 
she's coming out at the bottom all the way through and I'm just gonna leave it a little bit high like that because if I decide to add icing on the top of the head that will make the the, the hook right here uh, with less space so I want to have plenty of space there so and then see the bottom comes out through the bottom and like I said the reason I do that is I want to make sure that there is a wire going through the whole body not just the head but the um, the body as well and if it's too tilted too high up just tilt it back down and just kind of press the clay around it you should be fine and then we're gonna get another piece of clay like this is real simple to make you guys and they ended up really really cute if my phone for some reason stops recording at a certain amount of time there will because my phone tends to do that there will be a part two so if the ornament is not complete look for part two so all I'm doing is I'm again softening conditioning it's called conditioning the clay whether you do it through that pasta machine or clay machine or you do it with your hands and I've already actually worked quite a bit with this clay so it's fine and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna make another ball by rolling it in between my the palm of my hands and there is the ball again it's about the same size as what I use for the head so the head's gonna be bigger than the body and I'm gonna kind of roll it into like a pear kind of like a pear shape and I don't want it real skinny so that's that's good for me and all you're going to do you're gonna do the same thing again you're just gonna press it down all I'm doing is pressing it down got my exacto knife did I? I might have one in here yeah I got one in here you are gonna need an exacto knife or a what the uh, people who work a lot with clay they use the the one-sided blades that you put in the razors that's what they use so I'm just gonna use my exacto knife and right here in the bottom in the rounder shape I'm just gonna cut straight down almost the full length of the blade I have on my exacto and make sure to get all of this off of there with a paper towel or something because if you're using this for your other crafts you are going to get color on it so all I did was split it right there and I'm just going to kind of soften the edges so it doesn't look like just a sharp edge cut so all I'm doing is just kind of softening those edges so they're not so sharp and this is the body to the um looks like i went a little crooked this one looks skinnier than this one but that's fine so here's the body now to it really doesn't call for adding extra type any type of glue but I like to use glue just for added um, for my own for my own self. I want to make sure that I did everything possible for it not to fall apart. So what I'm using here is a clay glue that's by Scopi, and I'm just going to add a little bit to right here, just a little bit right there. That's all I need, and there's a lot in there. And actually, I would recommend it. Uh, that you put it in I haven't done it yet but I'm gonna put it in one of these bottles so all we're going to do is we're going to insert the paper clip right into the body and press it down so there is almost our whole gingerbread now to give this gingerbread texture you can either use a toothbrush, which is what I have here, or you can use a little ball of um, uh, Reynolds Wrap foil paper and just uh, make a ball with it. And I have one. Let me just find it. I had one here. Here it is. Here is the little ball that I did because I want to make this. I know gingerbreads are smooth because you cut them with a cookie cutter, but I want mine to have texture. And all I did was ball up a small piece of uh, Reynolds wrap and I'm going to roll it around on my cookie 
on the top and on the sides to make it look like an actual cookie. And I'm going to do the same thing on the sides. Like, these are super simple to make, guys. As you can see, we're almost done here. And I'm going to do the same thing on the sides just to give it some texture. As little, as much as you like. I like to do it around the edges as well, too. So there is my... So really, you know, you don't really need a lot. Mostly it's just your clay because you really wouldn't have to glue it. That's just a me thing. Okay, so here we have the head and we have the body. To make the eyes on our, our gingerbread, I'm going to use these tools that I use for my paper crafting. I'm going to have to clean them up afterwards, but this is what I've been using. The We Are Memory Keepers. You guys probably already have some of these in your... Um, in your tools so I'm gonna make the two eyes and I usually like to do them like the halfway mark right underneath the halfway mark some people debate that it should be lower but you know you put them wherever you want it's your gingerbread so I just made a couple indentations there for the eyes and then I'm gonna use another tool that we use for crafting for the mouth I know I brought it over here but what here it is and this other tool, you guys probably have it in your stash as well, is the Nuvo little scoop ones. I believe my friend Ginger gifted me this. But see this little shovel part right here? In cake decorating, there is a tool like this, and it's made for making the mouth of gum paste or fondant uh, characters. And that's all I'm going to use. I'm going to just find the center. I know the lighting is not that great here. And I'm going to put the mouth right underneath the eyes in the center and just push it in just a little bit see now I have the mouth on there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it like two little dimples on the side with my ball tool I use this for scoring quite a bit so there's the mouth now for the eyes you can either use black clay if you're going to be playing a lot with clay I would say buy the black clay but if you're not um, if you can get some glass beads um, I'm going to use black glass beads for the eyes because I do have to bake them. So you want to make sure that whatever you're using uh, is uh, you can bake it and it's not going to get ruined. Oops, I dropped one. I dropped one. So this is what I'm using. These are Toho beads, but you can find any beads. And these are probably like an 8 Not the real tiny ones. You don't want the real tiny ones. I think a 6-0 is too big, but I think an 8 might be perfect. So all I do is, I don't even add glue. I just uh, push them into that little indentations that I made. So there are the eyes to my gingerbread. Now I want to add some little buttons. And how I'm going to do that is, y'all remember that I made the little peppermints in the green. I haven't made them in the red, but I did make them in the green. So I'm going to add three little peppermint uh, for the buttons and I'm gonna give myself just you know like a little template or placement to follow and I'm gonna use three of these little uh, peppermints these clay peppermints for the buttons there they might be a little too big but we'll see I think I have two different sizes hold on I may have a smaller pack yeah, I'm, I'm going to use these really small ones. These might be a little too big. So I do have some smaller ones, and that's what I'm going to use. So there's one. See, these are a lot smaller. Okay. I have three right there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the glue and I don't have to but I'm going to and give myself hopefully three dots. The lighting doesn't seem to be very good in here but and I'm just taking some from the first one and just using that. I'm going to clean up this glue and these are going to be the buttons on my gingerbread. 
There's one. I'm sorry that my big old hand is in the way, but I have to be able to see. And clean up the excess glue. There's not so much. I'm just going to clean it up with my finger, but it is pretty tacky. So there are my buttons on my gingerbread. Now we're just going to make um, the hands. To make the hands again, I'm going to use the same uh, piece of clay I've been working with all along and make a little ball. I'm going to make two of them about the same. Hopefully as close to the same size as possible. This might be a little bigger. Just I'm just rolling it in between my hands. Yeah, it's a little too big. And try to get them about the same size. That way your ha the hands or the arms on your project looks the same. And I'm going to wrap this up because I'm done with the brown. Like, that's how easy this project is, guys. So super easy. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this into a cylinder. More like a pear shape again, like we did the body. Right about there. And then I'm going to flatten it. That's all, that's all I'm going to do to it. And I am going to give it texture. And I'm going to do the same to the other. I'm going to roll it like a teardrop or a pear. Make it about the same length as the other one. And then I'm going to flatten it. So that's what it looks like. And we're going to give it texture with the foil. Because you want your cookie to look all the same. And I'm not, I don't think I'm going to add the white because I don't have any cut. And to be quite honest, I would have to stop what the, the video and go wash my hands several times. Because when you're working with color, as you can see, there's brown on my hands from the dye that's in the clay. If I were working with red, it would even be worse. So by the time you go to work with your white clay, and I should have done that from the beginning. So start with your white clay making your pieces. And I'm going to show you how to do them with the brown, uh, but just pretend I'm using white. So to add the arms to it, if you wanted to, you could insert a piece of wire, and I think I have some here. Let me see if I have a small piece of wire up here. I do. See this wire that I cut off the paper clip? I could actually just pass it through one side of my gingerbread all the way to the other up. I'm running into resistance here, so I'm running into the other wire. Hold on, hold on, let's see. Nope, it's not long enough. I was going to, actually, you know what, I'm going to leave it. Because I still see, see how it's sticking out on either end? And I'm going to glue the arms there, and that will just give it added support where it's not going to fall apart. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue on both of them. Not the part that I roughed up, but the uh, smooth part. And I'm going to add the, the arms. You want to attach them right between the head and the neck. I'm going to go down to make sure it gets caught up on that wire. And there's the hand, the arm. And now we're going to do the same to the other. Again, in between the head and the body. I'm going to curve it a little bit so make sure it gets caught up on that. Look at that, guys. Look at how cute and simple that is. Now, I do have some candy canes that I uh, pre-did, and I'm going to go ahead and use those right now. Because you want to put everything that you're going to add to your uh, gingerbread, you want to do it before you bake it. So here is my candy cane that I'm going to put maybe facing this way. So I'm going to add some glue to this, and it's soft. It's still soft, so I'm going to add some glue. Not too much, just a little bit. And I'm going to add it right here under this hand. Maybe a little bit lower, you know why? Because we got to make a bow. we got to give them a bow tie. So there is my candy cane. I could actually pick up this arm and let it hold it like that. So there's our candy cane. Now we're going to make our little bow. Like this is super duper easy. 
all you need is a little piece of red clay now when you're buying clay and I learned this the hard way there's a red and then there's a translucent red so if you're gonna do it in and the, the red is very dark and the translucent is a little bit bit more see-through in order to avoid because your hands will get really really red at equal parts of the translucent red with the red clay I couldn't even have made that candy cane before because it was it would get everywhere I couldn't even mix it with my white because then my white would be red it so I had to order the translucent so I could kind of dilute it a little bit as far as the intensity and color so I'm conditioning my clay right now and again I'm going to I'm going to just take a little couple little pieces of clay equal amounts for my bone now you can use a mold for this but I don't have a mold small enough so I'm just going to roll it in between my finger and my the palm I'm going to make it into a teardrop shape again see like a little teardrop and I'm going to flatten this this is going to be our it's kind of like a Hershey's candy kiss the kiss candy candy kiss and this is going to be half of our bow I'm sorry guys you can't see but you'll see when I move there's half the bow and now we're going to do the same with the other piece it actually feels like it has too much we're gonna make another little ball like a teardrop shape see like that and then I'm gonna flatten the back not the point just the back and here is the other portion of our bow oops so we're gonna put it put them tip to tip and what we're going to do we're going to need I don't have a toothpick so I'm gonna use this you do need a toothpick so I'm gonna put like indentations like on my bow hopefully this won't get stuck just to give it like um like if the bow has pleats in it and I gotta scoot these together they kind of moved apart so there they are and then you're gonna take another little ball I'm gonna take off this little piece and I could have used a peppermint too but I'm just gonna use this make a little ball and just smash it like that and this is going to go on top of the bow and that's going to be the center of our bow. That'll be the center of our bow. I'm going to flatten this some a little bit too. So there is the bow to our gingerbread. Look at how cute he is. And like we're literally almost done. If you wanted to add a name to the back, I added names to the back of the ones that I did for my brother. He loves to give, uh, have ornaments made for his children and grandchildren every year. So he, um, he wanted me to personalize them. I have this set and you can find this in, in any clay section, but they're small letters. I think you can see them fairly well. They're small letters. And uh, all you do is stamp it onto the back of the, here. Oh, sure. I'm not going to stamp this one because I do want to personalize it. And I'll have to do it after my video. But all you do is you take the letter and you stamp it onto the clay. And be sure, see there? Be sure to add cornstarch to these, like a little pile of cornstarch and just dab them in there. That way they don't get stuck in the clay. But that's all you do is you just get do the impression of that letter. And make sure not to go real deep because then you'll get this square that's around your letter. So you wanna avoid doing that because I got that on some of mine and I didn't like it. So anyway, um, not all we need is the lines for it. And I'm not going, like I said, I'm not going to, um, do it with the white but I will do it with the brown so you y'all can see what I'm talking about so I'm going to remove move him let me move him out of the way and I'm going to share with you I have another piece of wax paper here and I'm going to share with you how I made the the lines the white lines for the the hands the legs and the head 
Let me move all this out of the way. All you're going to do is you're going to roll out a little piece of, of clay. And you want it pretty thin. You do want it pretty thin. I'm not going to roll it out too much thinner. It's kind of hard to do it on the wax paper. So if you are going to be playing with clay, I recommend you get that little acrylic block or glass block to be able to work with your clay. See this uh, piece right here? It came actually came in a three-piece. Is this one, the one that's just a blade, and then the blade that you can curve. So this is the one because it looks like Rick Rack is the one that I use to cut the lines for the white lines for the icing part on my gingerbread. And all you do is cut down. Let me remove that. And you get that little chevron or rickrack. I'm going to move that out of the way. But to make the lines, I all I did was I lined up, making sure that everything lined up perfectly. And then I would cut it. And I'm kind of just pulling the blade towards me to kind of unattach it to the other piece. But this is what you end up with. Here is that, oh, let me put it on something white. Here is that rickrack you end up with. So you want to do that in the white. And that's what you're going to use to add, let me move this out of the way. That's what you're going to use. I wish I had had it pre-done, guys. That way I could share it with you. So that's what you're going to use as the icing, the rickrack icing that goes on the bottom of the feet, on both feet, on the arms, and then on the head as well. How cute is that? But just imagine that that were white. Anyway, guys, after I did this, all I would do would put this on a baking sheet and I wouldn't use a craft paper. I don't rec um, wax paper. I recommend parchment paper because then you could just pick it up, put it on a cookie sheet and bake it on that paper. Um, this you can't, the wax paper really, the, you can't bake on it, but on the parchment paper you can. So you would bake this for about, and this is to me thicker than a quarter of an inch. So I would bake this about I'm going to say 18 to 20 minutes on a 275 uh, oven. And that's all you have to do. And on the back part, I'll show you the back. See how flat it is on the back? This is where I would put the name and the date. Because I think the ones that I created, I even actually added a mask in a white uh, because of, you know, COVID and everything. Not that it's funny or anything like that. But this is something that is going to make history and just a reminder, you know, for us, you know, to that we never think that these things can happen to us. But I did do the other ones with face masks because of what's happening this year. And um, the excess glue that's on here, I would take it off with a toothpick or something. I would clean this off. I mean, it's not necessary. But I do recommend that you clean it off. And again, all you would do is take your letter and indent them into the back of this in the smooth area of your project. Thank you so much for watching. I hope. Oh, and one more thing before I forget. In order to get the candy cane and the bow to look shiny, I would do that on the bow. I would do it on the candy cane and on the little peppermints that I have there. There is a Sculpey, um and it adds like a gloss to certain areas. I wouldn't gloss the whole thing, but I would gloss the um, the pep the candy cane, the bow, and the little peppermints. So I'm going to link the tools that I used and the exact colors that I used in the description box in case you guys want to make your own. But as you can see, it didn't take us no time at all. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone has a great day. I hope that this helps you. If you have any more questions, please let me know. And I'm going to link the video that I followed to make this one and it's a really good video so I really didn't need to uh, share it with you but a lot of times we don't see the same people and if you missed her video hopefully this will help you thanks for watching I hope everyone is having a great day and God bless bye